more popular programs to do a double Welcome year. to the LGBTQ Virtual College Fair, sponsored by the New Jersey Association for College Admission Counseling and powered by StriveScan. Each school in attendance today has taken an active step in building their LGBTQ plus communities. By participating in this fair, they have acknowledged wanting LGBTQ plus students in their greater communities. Additionally, we have utilized the Campus Pride Index to showcase an objective rating as to where the policies of each institution fall in terms of LGBTQ plus friendliness. If a school participating today has a campus pride index score, you can find the score listed next to their name at strivescan.com slash LGBTQ. The pride index is always a good place to start with your search, but it should never be the only place you look. And now a few housekeeping announcements before we get started. You can use the Q&A button on your screen to type your questions to our presenters at any time. Your camera and microphone are off, so the panelists cannot see or hear you. And a recording of this presentation will be available within a week at strivescan.com slash LGBTQ. And now I'd like to turn it over to our presenters. And first up is Pacific University, Oregon. Perfect. Well, good evening from out here on the West Coast. I'm going to pull up and share my screen and just tell you a little bit about Pacific University. So uh, my name is Derek and I'm actually your admissions counselor here at Pacific University. And I get the pleasure of working with students from all over the US and getting to tell you a little bit more about what we have to offer here at Pacific. So we're a small private liberal arts university. We're located about 25 miles west of Portland out in the state of Oregon. So if you know your geography, we're kind of in the Northwest corner of the Northwest corner of the US. Um, and we're about 30 minutes from downtown Portland and about an hour from the coast. So where we're at is amazing location because we get the ability to be near Portland, be near the voices that are there, but also be far enough away that our campus has its own voice. It has its own community to be in, and you still get to experience the amazing things like nature, which is a huge part of coming to Oregon, by being able to get out to the Oregon coast in an hour, be able to get up into the Tillamook National Forest and hike very, very quickly. And as the most diverse school in Oregon, you're going to find a very inclusive, very welcoming body of students from over 41 different states, 17 different countries, and just about everything you can think of as far as a background. And because we are a smaller school, you're going to be able to have your voice heard. You're gonna be called on in class. You're gonna be expected to talk about your experiences and how those have shaped who you are. And that makes for an amazing student activity at Pacific, because what it means is that for our students who are coming to study at Pacific, we have over 65 different majors, minors, and programs that we offer to about 1,900 undergraduate students and about 2,000 graduate students as well. And what you get in that uh, ability is an honors type college for all of our majors. Whether you wanna major in the pre-health professions and go into physical therapy or optometry, or you wanna study something like creative writing, education, uh, social work, we have nationally and regionally ranked programs in all of those things. So you're gonna find this really amazing education but you're also gonna find that small school atmosphere where your average class size is only 19 students. Our large lecture halls seat 50 students. That's as big as they get. Our small classes are four, five, and six. So your voice is going to be part of that conversation while you're here at Pacific. And at Pacific, all of our classes are taught by professors. No TAs, no grad students doing any teaching while they're here. That instead you actually learn from the professors who are very excited to talk to you, who are very excited to teach you, and again, because of those small classes, you get to be part of that education rather than just a passive observer. We also want you in and out of Pacific in four years or less. Pacific has a four-year graduation guarantee, which means you get a four-year education, not fifth year, sixth year of Victory Lab, but instead that you actually get to come to Pacific, study, start doing job shadowing, research, and internships freshman and sophomore year, not waiting until you're a senior, so you figure out exactly what you want to do, and be able to graduate in that full four years while you're here. So it's an amazing opportunity for our students academically. But along with that, we know our students also need an outlet. And so what that means at Pacific is that our students are busy. We don't have students who come in, only study one thing and go into one building. Our students love to do different things. Whether that's joining some of our 70 different clubs and organizations on campus with every different identity and background group you could think of, student government, Greek life, Rainbow Coalition, or even our Hawaii club you're going to find a group of people who are like you and you wanna build on that and educate others around you. 
Or maybe that means joining the performing arts with music, band, or theater, where you do not have to major or minor in the program to be part of it. You just are part of that if that's something you're excited about. And same thing with varsity athletics. With 24 varsity, 20 intramural, and 10 um, inter, uh, club sports, we have a lot of opportunities for our students to be active. And so I mentioned earlier, our students are busy. Our average student this year is involved in three clubs or sports that have nothing to do with what they're studying. And that's what we want on our campus, for our students to be able to study, but not just grow in the classroom, but grow as a person as well. And along with that, to be able to give back. So I know a slide titled Centers and Institutes is probably not the most exciting thing you wanted to see today. But the reason I bring this up is what makes Pacific very unique is that our students have a voice in everything we do here. So all these different centers here, we're going to uh, focus a little bit on the Center for Gender Equity today, but there's also one for education, there's one for social change, there's one for multicultural. And what these are is these are all groups on campus that are not passive. Pacific is not a passive campus. You are expected to have a voice and we want to hear it. We want you to build Pacific into a better university for all of our students. And so all of these different groups have different programming, education they do on campus, but they also have a seat at the table. Every one of these centers has a voice on the student government and has a voice when it comes to our board of trustees members. Each year, one group is selected to speak at the board of trustees member uh, program. So you're going to hear about our students and what they can change at Pacific. And along with that, I do want to mention our admission standards. So at Pacific, we are um, a rolling admission campus. So whether you're a senior right now looking for college next fall or you're a sophomore kind of planning down the road, you're going to have a lot of opportunity. As a private liberal arts school, we have no in-state or out-of-state tuition and no in-state or out-of-state scholarships. So by applying to Pacific through the common application, I'm gonna receive it on the other end. We're gonna take a look at that, holistically review the file and award you merit scholarship between 15 and $27,000 per year for all four years. There's additional scholarship for events on campus, for virtual events, and for things like music, dance, theater, speech and debate, and different identity and ethnic backgrounds. So take a look at all of those opportunities to make Pacific a very affordable option for you as well. And we are test optional. You do not need to send in test scores to Pacific. If it's something that you've taken and you believe it makes you a stronger application, please feel free to include those, but they're not required for admission or merit scholarship. And again, I'm Derek. I'm your admissions counselor here at Pacific University, so please feel free to reach out. You can scan that QR code. It'll take you directly to my page, and you can get more information there. But I appreciate you listening, and if you do have any additional questions, please don't hesitate to put them in the Q&A. We're glad to answer those for you today. So hope you have a great rest of the evening. Thank you, Derek. Uh, next up is the University of Mary Washington. Awesome. Um, so I'm just going to start by introducing myself really quickly. My name is Olivia Lehman. I'm one of our admissions counselors here at Mary Washington. Um, I'm so glad to be able to do this uh, kind of panel tonight because um, as a LGBTQ alumni, um, I really want to kind of spread the message that UMW is a really inclusive and welcoming space. Um, I'm sure you could tell that from um, looking at me, but I just want to go ahead and kind of talk about uh, Mary Washington overall um, and mention some different things that we have to support our LGBTQ students. Um, so just to kind of jump right in and get you guys familiar with Mary Washington and where we're located. Um, we are located in Fredericksburg, Virginia. So we are about 50 miles outside of both Washington, D.C. and Richmond, Virginia. Um, so we have students that come from all over the uh, state, of course, also all over the nation, as well as international students that come from over 18 different countries. Um, so we do have a lot of diversity within our student body. Um, we have about 4,200 undergraduates, um, and our institution is really built for undergrads. Um, we don't have a lot of graduate students on our campus um, and all of our professors um, are master professors. None of them are teaching assistants or grad assistants. Um, so you can see our in-state and out-of-state tuition. Um, I'll talk a little bit about different financial aid options uh, a little bit later, um, but I do just like to start that off right away so you know exactly how much you, you would um, be paying as a starting place. Um, although again, we do have a lot of scholarships that go to support our students. Um, just to start with uh, a little bit of more about our size and the academic experience. Um, so we have a 13 to one student to faculty ratio at UMW. Um, so our average class size is 19 students, but again, you might get smaller than that in your senior level courses. Um, I had a class, it was a poetry seminar that had nine of us and the quality of feedback I got really allowed me to improve my work, um, learn the publication process, get works published even when I was a senior. So it's something that will help you out um, when you're a student or when you graduate and it'll 
allows you to build a connection between you and your professor that is going to really um, make Mary Washington feel like home, um, not just a place where you're going to school. Um, if you're interested in kind of more STEM related fields, we do have over $275,000 dedicated to undergraduate research. We are a small Virginia liberal arts school, so sometimes it surprises students, but we do have a lot of students coming to us for um, specifically STEM related fields and majors. Um, you can see some of the cool technology that we have on the up, upper right pictures there. Um, we do have a brand new science building that was fully renovated. So um, if you're kind of interested in the sciences, we definitely have something for you as well. Um, I will also mention um, we do have over 80 majors and minors and we don't make our students declare right when you come in. So um, a lot of schools, you know, they have you declare what you want right away. Um, we let you try at different courses, um, meet with an academic advisor and really see what you're great at and what you want to do um, before you're forced to kind of pick that path. Um, we have over 150 clubs and organizations for students to get involved in. I was president of the Creative Writing Club as a student, and I got to plan things like poetry slams. Um, we gave free pizza, cash prizes to folks at that event, and it was a really awesome community building event um, that I got to kind of plan with a bunch of friends in the club. So joining clubs and organizations are the best way to meet other people um, at UMW. Um, we don't have any Greek life on campus. We pride ourselves in being an inclusive space in all realms, so that includes our campus life outside of academics. Um, so if you're interested in getting to know folks, um, you will be doing it through our clubs and organizations or just through um, kind of being on our friendly campus. Um, we do have study abroad programs. One in three students study abroad with us at UMW. I studied abroad um, and we have a Center for International Education that will really help you find these programs. Um, you actually pay the same tuition as if you're studying on our campus in Fredericksburg um, for a lot of these programs for full exchange semesters. Um, so you could be studying in Prague, but you'd be paying like you're studying in Fredericksburg, Virginia. Um, so that's a really cool partnership that we have with a lot of institutions. Um, to talk about how we can make Mary Washington affordable for you, um, the first thing I want to say is that as an admissions team, we're actually here to help you with financial aid. Um, of course, there is a financial aid office, but we're the ones that can really help walk you through scholarship opportunities, um, point you to um, scholarships that you might qualify for, um, and we're going to be the first review on your application. Um, and that's when we actually award scholarships scholarships right away is based off of your academic um, transcript and kind of your overall performance in high school. Um, so our admitted student profile you can see up here. Um, but again, this is just an average. We have no one student at UMW. We like to have a diverse student body and always. So, you know, we might have students with um, GPAs far below this and GPAs far above this. So it really is a spectrum. Um, we don't require SAT or ACT scores. We are a test choice school. Um, if you're not sure, you know, you might want to send them to us. Um, feel free free to reach out. We're happy to tell you. But honestly, if you send them or don't send them, um, it doesn't really matter. We'll look at your whole application no matter what. And we do have a holistic review process. Um, so we also have an honors program. Uh, if you're interested in applying to honors, you can see there is a little bit of a higher profile for that. Um, and there are lots of cool honors benefits um, that you can enjoy as a student. Um, so now that I'm kind of getting to the end here, I do just want to share with you a little bit about um, some of our resources specifically for LGBTQ students on our campus. Um, I have a whole presentation that I did with other folks at a professional conference on um, how to find LGBTQ inclusive schools. So I'm going to link that um, at the end. Um, but I I will say that talking to everybody here tonight is a great first step, um, but also specifically for Mary Washington's campus, um, we have PRISM, which is an LGBTQ um, affinity group on campus that plans a lot of great events. I went to it. I had friends that ran it. I mean, it's a great way to meet other folks in the community. Um, I have lifelong friends in the LGBTQ community. In, uh, hopefully lifelong friends um, from Mary Washington um, in the LGBTQ community. And it's just a really supportive and inclusive environment. And um, I'm running out of time. So we'll tell you more about that at the end with questions and answers and things like that. So thanks so much. Great. Thank you, Olivia. And next up is Texas A&M University at Galveston. Danny, I don't think we're hearing you. No. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. 
Okay. All right. Sorry. I don't know what happened. Let me go back. <laughs> okay. Can everybody still hear me? We're good. Okay. Yes. So Texas A&M University, uh, we're everything about um, the ocean. So everything from marine biology, marine engineering, transportation, um, basically everything that you would do with the ocean, we've got it. Uh, so we tend to bring in a lot of people who love the ocean or love being by the ocean, um, but we're just a small university connected with Texas A&M, um, but we do everything maritime related. So we have about 2,200 students. Um, so we're one of those smaller schools as well located down in the down in sunny Galveston, Texas. So it's along the Gulf Coast and it's about 40 minutes away from Houston. A lot of really great population, um, really great uh, city. Um, you know, we make up part of the larger Galveston city and it's a tourist town. So you get to meet a lot of really interesting people. It brings in a lot of diversity to not only the uh, Galveston Island, but the campus itself. So we have nine undergraduate degrees, four graduate programs. Um, a few of our programs are three plus two programs, which means you do three years in your undergrad, two years in your grad school, and you graduate after six, uh, let's see, after five years with your uh, bachelor's and your master's program. We also have a maritime academy. It's one of six uh, maritime academies in the nation. So we're really excited to, to bring some uh, different things to y'all today. Um, Again, everything that we do is maritime related. So ocean studies, business, liberal arts, everything ocean. So we also have an engineering academy. That's where students that are Texas A&M students are able to come and study with us for about a year, year and a half. And then they'll go finish up um, an engineering major up in College Station, which is about two and a half hours away. We get all of the same sports through Texas A&M. So um, you know, basketball, football, anything like that. We go up there to watch the sports, but we do everything for the ocean here on our campus. Um, again, for the Maritime Academy, that's a unique program. It's about um, it's about 20% of our student population are in this program. We have a lot of LGBTQ students are in this as well. We graduate a lot of queer mariners and we love it. Um, so we're creating that, that space and making sure that it's inclusive for our students that are here. Um, we also have a lot of really great co-curricular activities. I'm assuming you didn't hear my name at the beginning. So my name is Danny Rowe. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm actually not an admissions counselor. I'm the assistant director for student diversity initiatives on our campus. So I've, I've had a hand in creating some of these activities. And I think that's really the lifeblood of what brings you to a college, right? Of course, we've got academics everywhere and we have small class sizes and everything, but it's really after you get done with, with studying for the night, who are you gonna connect with? What kind of community are you gonna bring? This is where I come in. Um, a lot of our co-curricular activities is where I'm at. So yes, we have study abroad where you can go over to Copenhagen, Denmark, you know, South America. We have Alaska classes, even though that's not really studying abroad, still in the United States, it's studying a couple thousand miles away. So um, we have a lot of opportunities like that with our, with a uh, lot of our faculty. Um, we've got research, campus life. Um, we've got a cyber learning center that's got tutoring services and all that fun stuff. Um, but on top of that, I want to talk with y'all specifically about student organizations because I think that's where LGBTQ life meets campus life. So we have over 45 organizations, um, but our, our LGBTQ uh, specific ones are the ones that I work with the most. Our C. Aggie Pride is our LGBTQ organization. They bring things like local drag queens coming to campus. So if you see here on the left, that's one of the local queens here in Galveston. She does a lot of shows. She gives back to the community. She comes in and does story hours. So this was a really specific, it was a really cool program that we had um, where she came in and read, Oh, the Places You'll Go. Um, and over there to the right, the other queen that you see um, sitting down is our director of the library. So we have a lot of really, really amazing allies on our campus and they not only will be there for you in the hard times, they'll be with you in there in the fun times. They get in it with us. So it's really fun. Um, we also have like really great communities of students. So uh, we've got everything from our community leaders, which they're the student workers that go out into the res halls. Um, all of them are Aggie ally trains. So they know how, how to work with our populations and how to be sensitive to some of the things like coming out 
or just like having fun and watching RuPaul's Drag Race. Like they, they do it all with us. So um, a lot of our community leaders and a lot of our leaders across campus are ally trained. So that's really nice is that, you know, everybody's got that, that education for the community and how to give back. Um, also, I'm the advisor for the Ally Plus, so that's the A Plus Living Learning Community, and we accept students all the way up until the time school starts. Um, we've got a specific res hall where if students want gender inclusive housing options, I'm proud to have said that I had a hand in that and we brought that to our campus. It's something very new for Texas universities and I want to make sure that um, we create safe spaces, brave spaces, spaces where you could be yourself and be affirmed. Um, here on campus. And if you see students have a really great time um, in, these, in these programs. So my name's Danny Rowe, he, him. I've got a lot of information for this university. Um, and although I'm not an admissions counselor, I know exactly how to get you into the university. I can answer all those questions about test um, scores and everything like that. Um, shoot me an email. You can also reach out to our admission staff if you wanna reach directly to them. Um, but I'm excited to welcome you to the island and I'll put my contact information below. Thanks. Excellent. Thank you, Danny. Um, so next up is Bard College at Simons Rock. All right. Hello, everyone. I'm just getting my screen ready to share here. All right. Can we see that? Is that good? Um, so my name is Olivia Calvi. My pronouns are she, her, hers, and I'm one of the admission counselors here at Simons Rock. So we are a residential four-year liberal arts college located in Great Barrington, Massachusetts. But we're a little bit different from your traditional college and that's because we are an early college program. This means that our students come to us after finishing the 10th or 11th grade of high school without receiving a high school diploma and start college early. Um, so kind of how our school was founded was that there was a woman named Elizabeth Blodgett Hall. She's our founder. She was an educator in the area. And she realized that the students she was working with weren't you know, being offered what their full academic potential was in their high school and that they were ready for college early. So she took her parents' farm, you can see our beautiful campus there, um, and founded Simons Rock on that campus. So a little bit more about what our educational model looks like. I think this graphic does a really good job at describing it. We can go ahead and ignore the two years that are ninth and 10th grade. That's part of our two-year high school that leads into the early college. But the green years are what you're looking at as a first two years for freshmen and sophomores. And um, during that time, you're working on a liberal arts curriculum. And after those years, you're finishing your associate of arts degree. And then you can either transfer if another institution is offering something that makes a little bit more sense for you, or we'd love for you to stay on campus for two more years and finish your bachelor's degree. Um, and that's when you would pick your concentration. We call our majors concentrations. Um, and finish out that program there. So again, you don't need a high school diploma to apply. And we're currently accepting applications for so from sophomores and juniors for fall of 2021. And you can finish that whole arc that's normally eight years of high school and college in six years instead. So some fast facts about our col college that make us a little bit unique. So we have 35 different concentrations for students to choose from. Um, students can choose to concentrate in more than one. All of our classes are discussion based. We have only about 400 students, which means we're a really small tight knit community um, and our faculty members and our students and our staff all get to know each other really well and support each other. We have a couple of different partnership programs that are unique. I mentioned after the associate's degree, students have the option to transfer if they'd like. And so some of note are, we have a partnership with SUNY Upstate Medical School for their master's and their PhD program. Vermont Law, Oxford for Study Away, that we do also have different Study Away opportunities. Um, and then we have two different three, two programs for engineering with Columbia and Dartmouth, which means at the end of those collective five years, you would get both a Bachelor of Arts from Simon Rock and a Bachelor of Science um, from that other institution. In terms of campus life, we have two different types of clubs on campus. Any student can start a club if they want one. And um, so we have different clubs based on identity and interest. So our identity clubs would be the Black Student Association, our Asian Student Association, our LGBTQ affinity group on campus, and then interest clubs um, where we are on a farm. So we do have sheep right now and somebody did start chicken club, which is my personal favorite. Um, but we also have chess club, d and club, and really anything is open to that. And then we do have athletics as well. That's not what we're known for, but we have students who will compete regionally in these sports. 
And then we're a school that's very focused on social justice and social change. So each week in the fall, we have a week called Symposium Week, which we dedicate to learning about a different social justice issue. And it's all surrounded by a theme. So each year, staff, students, and faculty will co-facilitate and attend workshops and um, that are part of your degree requirements toward the associate's degree. We'll bring in external speakers. Um, so this past year, our theme was on resilience, and that was really wonderful. And we did it all virtually, um, but it was still great. So some LGBTQ specific campus resources. This week, actually, so we celebrate pride in the spring at Simon's Rock. So we started our pride week on Sunday, yesterday, um, with Dolly Drag, which is our drag show that we have every year. And that's pictured in the bottom right here. Um, and then the top right photo is one of our student reps raising our progress flag. So we have um, that, which is up for six months of the year, and then it rotates with our Black Lives Matter flag. Um, but so our Pride Week started yesterday. We have events throughout this week. It's centered around, we build it around the International Day of Trans Visibility. And um, so we have different campus programming happening throughout. Um, in terms of other programming we have, we have our Council for Equity and Inclusion, which has an LGBTQ plus subcommittee. All of our housing, um, we do have gender inclusive housing options and it's all based on self-identification. And then all of our restrooms on campus are gender neutral. As I mentioned, interested in social justice. So we have our peer mentors who are student workers and um, who this is their part-time job on campus to work with the residence directors to build community-based programming that is focused on social justice. And then we do have safe zone ally trainings for our staff and faculty. So I would say currently right now about half of our staff is trained and we're working to make sure that all of our staff and faculty are trained. And then we have a bias response committee that will respond to any situation of bias um, on our campus. So those were just some of the resources. Um, I think one of the things that was really great in that this morning we had an all campus or an all staff video on campus for pride week um, and one thing that was very clear was that you know it's not uncommon or it's not unique to be queer at simon's rock so everyone in our community is really supportive and we welcome you into that space my contact information is below if you have any questions feel free to reach out great thank you olivia and next up is american university Uh, great. So good evening. My name is Dylan Robinson. I use he, him pronouns. I'm an assistant director of admissions at American University in Washington, D.C. I'm going to go over a quick university overview and then uh, a, a specific admissions overview. Um, to begin, we are a mid-sized university, about 8,500 undergraduate students, about 5,700 uh, graduate and law students. Uh, our average class size is 23, 11 to 1 student to faculty ratio. About 32% of our students identify as a student of color. We have all 50 states and over 122 countries represented. So it's a very diverse student population uh, in one of the most uh, diverse cities in the world. Uh, talking about a little bit about campus life. So we are division one. We do uh, play in the Patriot League with 15 division one teams, 150 other student led clubs and organizations. We have everything from mock trial and the debate team to um, our cheese tasting club and our beekeeping society. So no matter what you're interested in, we definitely have organizations for you. 45 different club and intramural sports as well as uh, 29 Greek organizations on campus. We do have six different schools at AU. Uh, and again, for AU specifically, you don't apply into a specific program or school. You apply to the university in general. You have about um, until the end of your sophomore year to actually solidify a major. Uh, so we really do pride ourselves in academic flexibility. So a majority of our students will actually double major or minor across schools uh, and across disciplines. Uh, one huge aspect uh, for our students is going to be study abroad. Again, we are a very international university, so about 70% of our students study abroad. We do have three AU centers abroad, AU Madrid, AU Kenya, and AU Brussels. But besides that, we do have about 150 other programs to choose from. So you name it, we have it, uh, short-term programs, long-term programs. We also want to make sure that any student who wants the opportunity to study abroad has that. So all the classes will transfer over and all the financial aid will transfer over as well. In addition, uh, another huge component to our students' experience at AU 
is internships. If you know anything about DC, it pretty much runs on interns. So our students will have uh, numerous opportunities in every single field that they're interested in. About 91% of our students complete at least one internship while at AU. And then the average amount of internships a, a student completes is about three. We are the only school in DC that offers what we call the U-Pass. It allows unlimited rides on the Metro and on the bus system for students so they can easily get to those opportunities uh, around the DC, uh, Maryland, Virginia areas as well. And again, you can it's a nice perk just to use to get to the museums, out to dinner, to the airport. Uh, but again, um, definitely a perk for students getting to and from those internships. A little bit about DC. Again, we are located in the Northwest part of the city. We're actually at the end of Massachusetts Avenue, which is known as Embassy Row in DC. So you'll pass all the different embassies. And actually one of our traditions uh, during Halloween is that our students would go trick-or-treating at the different embassies, getting, getting candy from all over the world, um, uh, which is a lot of fun. Again, we do have a traditional college campus, which is really nice. Even though we are an urban university, we do have about 90 acres uh, that is closed off from the, um, the rest of the city. Um, but again, you still get that uh, kind of traditional college feel and then the, um, the Department of Homeland Security is right across the street. Um, a little bit more about the application process. So again, we do have three different decision types, early, uh, early decision one, early decision two, and regular decision. We do not have role in admission uh, or early action. Uh, for the application, it's pretty straightforward. We do require uh, the Common App or the Coalition, high school transcript, uh, SAT or ACT scores if you choose to submit. AU is a test optional school. We've been test optional for the last 10 years, so that has always been a part of our process, which is nice. A resume or activities report, teacher letter recommendation, uh, application fee, secondary school, school report, guidance counselor recommendation, and of course the essay. We do holistic reviews of applications and we do re review applications by territory. I am not specifically the territory manager for the state of New Jersey. Uh, that rep will, all, um, will be the one to review all the applications that come from the state. And then last, uh, I would, do wanna mention financial aid. We do have two, two different types of aid at AU, need-based and merit-based. Uh, Merit-based is going to be through my office, the Office of Admissions. Every student applying to the university will be considered for merit-based scholarship. Uh, we do look at GPA and test scores if you choose to submit. Uh, again, if you don't submit test scores, you will still be considered for all merit scholarship opportunities. Uh, and then we do have need-based, and we do require both the FAFSA and the CSS profile. Um, the way that we do awarding is that we use FAFSA for federal aid and then the CSS profile CSS profile for AU grant aid. We are committing to making AU as affordable as possible uh, to students. So we do meet 100% of demonstrated institutional need for, for students where about 40% of our students graduate uh, with no loan debt, which I think is pretty awesome. And again, you can definitely get in touch with us. Um, we do have a lot of different online virtual programming for our students or for interested students and families. We do have very limited um, tours, in-person tours available, and you can go online to, to check those out. But thank you for joining. Great, thank you so much. And thank you to all of our presenters. Uh, we now have some time for Q&A. And so I'd invite all of our uh, presenters to come back on camera and uh, respond to this question. What unique campus event or program is specific to the LGBTQ plus community at your institution? Uh, and I'll ask that you answer in the same order that you presented. Sure, so one um, unique thing at Pacific is we have a really amazing connection with Darcel, which is a um, pretty famous drag uh, show in Portland. And they come out to campus each year. And what we've done is we've actually moved it from in the past, it was kind of its own event to we now call it Drag the Vote. So what it is, is it's a drag show on campus, but the whole thing is centered around getting more allies, getting more LGBTQ friendly and LGBTQ community to actually get out and vote. Again, using their voice and doing it in a really fun, unique way. So we call it Drag the Vote and it's a really fun event for everyone to attend on campus. 
Um, first of all, that sounds really fun. Um, but second of all, to talk about um, one of my favorites on Mary Washington's campus is definitely a PRISM prom. So PRISM is our LGBTQ organization. I say it uh, carefully because sometimes people hear prison, which is not what I'm saying. Um, and PRISM prom is an event where um, you actually get to go and celebrate a prom style event. So you can go with a date, you can go with friends. Um, and it's a really nice kind of event because a lot of us couldn't actually celebrate uh, and present ourselves at prom in the way that we wanted. Um, so it's a really nice, um, I think, cathartic experience to go with your friends or your community and to really get to celebrate that um, and celebrate yourself and your community. I, I personally think that that's one of the most fun events that we do just overall on campus, um, but it's planned by PRISM. So students do get to plan it primarily, which is awesome. Okay, and not to steal the name, but we we all, we have a uh, Prism's pretty uh, unique for the community, right? Um, we have a conference, a student-led LGBTQ-centered uh, conference each spring that focuses on LGBTQ education uh, towards the greater community. We invite um, high school students from the community to come in, find allyship, come and see our campus a little bit. But this is primarily for the students on our campus and the campuses around us. Um, and we bring we bring guest speakers. We uh, bring a really cool um, entertainment every year. So we had Daniel Frasese from Mean Girls a few years ago, and it was it was killer. It was so awesome. And we end the weekend by doing a case study on an actual issue that's that's happening in our state or on our campus um, that our leaders can take part in making change and creating policy. Yeah, so at Simon's Rock, I mentioned that we do choose to celebrate Pride in the spring. So we have Pride Week right now. Um, we have Dolly Drag, which I mentioned. Um, we also have different workshops going on throughout the week, like Trans Life TED Talks, um, Queer Resilience and Joy, Queer Story Time. And one thing I think that's really wonderful about the Simon's Rock community is since we are such a small campus, it's not uncommon for our students to be in, well, this year, a Zoom room but in a space with someone from the financial aid office, someone from the registrar, their faculty members, the entire community showing up and supporting people, like I'll be in attendance of some of these events this week. So that's really fun. Um, and then our RDs also did a 24 hour Zoomathon for National Coming Out Day, and that was pretty awesome as well. Uh, at American University, one of the biggest events of the year actually happens during our All American Welcome Week. It's Drag Bingo. Uh, which is again, open to the entire first year class, which is really uh, exciting where you have about a thousand students in our gym participating in drag bingo, uh, where students really get competitive um, with, with it, which is a lot uh, great to see. Um, but it's again, one of the, the biggest events of the year. And I think one of the, the best. Awesome. And our next question is what steps is your campus taking to be more inclusive to the LGBTQ plus community? And again, we'll go in the same order that you presented. So I mentioned earlier, we have these amazing um, centers on campus where students are actually the ones running it, working with faculty, working with staff. And so that the Center for Gender Equity has done a huge push on our campus to open it up. Um, to be completely honest, when I was a student there 10 years ago and what campus is like now are two very different things. And that's a really good thing. A lot of things have changed. We've moved to having um, gender inclusive housing, gender inclusive restrooms across campus, just simple things that kind of on the face are little things, but because it was a student pushing it through, it wasn't a faculty member saying like, oh yeah, this, you know, we need to check off a box. It was actually a student coming in and saying, this is wrong. We need to fix it. It had a lot more impact on our campus. And you, so you see that in things like bringing some different scholarships for different identity and background groups onto campus. That was something that wasn't there even a few years ago. And being right next to Portland gives us a lot of those voices to hear from where they're doing pretty big national work. And so the students can actually work with people who are doing it on a larger scale to help Pacific do it in the right way moving forward. 
Um, well, I, I think there are several ways that I think our campus and our students really help to kind of um, queer campus. Uh, I would say one of the coolest things, and I think the thing that we do um, really well and, and continue to do is we hire a lot of LGBTQ faculty. Um, and of course, I was an English major, so I also had maybe a little bit more exposure to this. Um, but we do have a, a lot of, of LGBTQ faculty member just across different subjects. And so we actually, um, they actually teach uh, several different courses um, in different departments, uh, whether that's um, queer literature um, or there, I know there was a course on queering the Bible, like there's all these different types of classes where you actually get to learn um, about queer history and kind of see yourself reflected and learn about yourself in a way that um, I think is is really, really cool and important. Um, and so that's something that, that um, is a step that I think we've taken and are continuing to take as a university. Um, we also have gender inclusive housing that we used to just have an LGBTQ living learning community, Madison, which we still have. Um, and students who are transitioning or um, transgender students specifically are, are given priority for that housing. Um, but anyone in the community is, is eligible to live there. Um, and we've actually recently spread that to all over campus. So um, all of our buildings now have the option for flexible housing. I would say the main thing that Simons Rock is working on this year are those LGBTQ safe zone ally trainings that I talked about. That was something we started in the fall um, and we had about half of our staff and faculty trained. Our goal is to have everyone trained and to get stickers on office doors so that students know that they're about to enter into a space where this person has been through this training, has this knowledge um, and can help them in that way. Um, one thing that's really important for us across campus, whether it's academic affairs or in our admission office, is acknowledging that students might use a different name and different pronouns here than they do at home. So we're really intentional about making sure that all of our staff and faculty know that um, and that we're not going to be creating a space that is unsafe for someone when they go back home. Uh, oops, sorry. Um, at uh, American University, about 28% uh, of our students identify as uh, part of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, we do have gender inclusive housing and restrooms across campus. We do have um, uh, ally trainings as well in our Center for Diversity and Inclusivity. We also have a, a, a very robust spiritual life center as well, where we do have about 24 different spiritual life groups on campus that ho uh, host a number of different LGBT, LGBTQ plus um, programmings and uh, kind of uh, conferences and also kind of just um, uh, meetings on campus and what they call coffee, um, coffee with the center as well. So I'm gonna jump in here. Um, so for Texas A&M at Galveston, uh, I think the, the easiest way to sum it all up is policy work. So getting students involved with, create, with recreating, right? With rewriting uh, some of the policy that, that were written in, um, you know, kind of more traditional ways. Texas A&M um, is based off of tradition. And one thing that we know is that some people will kind of lean back and, and it's kind of an easy like, hey, we've always done it this way. And we're, we're in there, we've got uh, groups of faculty, staff and students, and especially students who are driving forward the voice of what does it mean to be a new Aggie? What does it mean to be a Texas A&M Aggie? And that's great being respectful and inclusive and really creating the community that wasn't there a few years ago. So, um, you know, we're, we're really getting in there and changing things. So starting with education from ally programs all the way up to conferences and creating um, instruction for syllabi to recreate, you know, how do you talk about names and pronouns and it, you know is that something that you want to do as a faculty member you know that's we're really trying to push the button here and it might not be um the same buttons that other universities are pushing but I, i'm going to tell you it's leaps and bounds for texas a m and it's something that's really exciting and we want students to come in we need the future class of students to come in and have their voice heard and create the community that they want Excellent. Well, thank you all for your responses. Um, we are just about out of time for this session. So I want to say thank you for joining us. Uh, when you close this window, there will be a very quick four question survey and we do appreciate your feedback. Um, and a reminder that this session and all other sessions as part of this college fair uh, will be available um, at strivescan.com slash LGBTQ in about a week. So thank you so much and enjoy the rest of your evenings.